Numerical Computation, additional video for Chapter 1. So this video should be viewed after you have seen the video for Chapter 1.4, Loss of Significance. So in this video, we take a look at a couple more examples where we have lost of significance and see what kind of a trouble that will cause us. So for the first example, we consider a very simple function, as you see. And the function is just um, a polynomial divided by polynomial. So y equals 2 plus x minus 2 over x. It's kind of a trivial and since in the numerator the 2 can cancel the negative 2 so theoretically this equals 1 when x is not 0 and if x equals 0 then this function is not defined but from calculus we also have learned that if you take the limit as x approaches 0 from the left or from the right y actually takes the value 1. So what will happen if we put this expression into the MATLAB and ask it to compute this for us? We see that when the absolute value of x is very small, then in the numerator we have 2 plus x which is a value very close to 2, and we subtract 2 from it. And subtraction of two values that are very close to each other will cause many significant digits to be lost, and therefore the accuracy of this computation for the numerator will be rather poor. Now let's write up the code in MATLAB and see how it performs. So here is a piece of very simple code. You define your x to be um, some value um, very small, so it ranges from 10 to minus 12 to minus 16, or the intermediate powers, so this is a very small number. And then you define the function 2 plus x minus 2, and you use the vector division divided by x, so it will return a vector in y. And uh, we use this format short e, that's a scientific notation, so you can see the powers. Okay, and we show x together with y. Okay, if you um, run this code in MATLAB, it will give you the following display. So the, the first row here are the x values, while the second row are the computed y values. And we know theoretically y should be approaching 1 as x approaches 0. But what do we get from this computation? We see that when x is um, 10 to the minus 12, we get something pretty close to 1, but there is a 0.1 or 0.01 percent of error introduced here. When x gets smaller and you see the error gets bigger, that is this value is away from 1 more. But when e is negative uh, 10 to the negative 14 for the x value, and then we see the y value actually is 1.02, that's a 2% of error, and here the error is even larger, is about, um, this is 0 0.88, it's very far from being 1. And when you put x to be 10 to the negative 16, and since x is so small, it thinks 2 plus x minus 2 is about 0, and it returns you the value zero. And that is indeed a very bad computation, very far away from one.
So we can um, safely conclude that MATLAB has serious trouble with this simple computation. Let's look at another example where the loss of significant digits is a real troublemaker. Let's consider a simple polynomial function, p of x equals x minus 1 to the power 5. So we are particularly interested in the value where x is close to 1. And uh, this function will take a value pretty close to 0. And as it's written, this computation, there's no trouble, it's rather OK. Now we can expand the polynomial, open it up, and write it in terms of different powers of x. So if you open this up, you get x to the 5 minus 5 x to the 4th plus 10 x to the 3rd minus 10 x squared plus 5 x minus 1. Theoretically, the expression qx is equivalent to that of px. But, unfortunately, if you want to compute this in a computer with the finite decimal places computation, then this expression is actually not so equivalent to the original one when x is close to 1. Because in this computation for the q, you have alternating signs. Let's say x is positive, then all these minuses, they, there you'll be performing subtractions. And uh, when x is very close to 1, you will end up in subtracting something rather close in values. And the error caused by the loss of significant digits will be rather large. Okay, so we can test this out in MATLAB and see how it works. So we design a vector x containing values very close to 1. We start with 1 and then we add and subtract on top some small value, okay, mm, to 10 to the negative. From 10 to the negative 10, minus it and plus it and take steps of 10 to the minus 12. So in this vector, there are x values all very close to 1. Then we compute the p with the polynomial expression x minus 1 to the power 5. And for q, we just coded in the expanded polynomial in all, with all the power terms of x. So in p and q, we will have two vectors with the value of that expression evaluated at the points that's stored in x. And then we can do two plots, one subplot and another subplot of these two functions and side by side so we can see the difference between them. Okay. And uh, we see that um, the plots will cover the interval for x from 1 minus 10 to negative 10 to um, x until 1 plus 10 to the power negative 10. So here are the plots. On the left, that's the plot for p. On the right, that's the plot for q. Remember, p is just 1 minus x to the power 5. q is the expanded form with the alternating sign where we are expecting loss of significant digit and therefore a large error. So pay attention to the magnitude of the, the axis for the function value. When x is that close to 1, um, the function is actually very close to 0, as you see here is 10 to the negative 50. But in the computation of q, um, we have a very, very large number comparing to this one here. See, this is negative 15. So 
If you show to plot these two functions together, then this is just purely wild oscillations and which is not capturing the function, the property of the function at all. So it's very, very bad. Okay, so um, this is a, a rather an extreme example for you to see that the loss of significant digit can cause quite a bit of trouble if you are not careful or you're not aware of it when you code. Okay, thanks for watching.